one of my favorite things, or one of my early favorite things with SolidWorks, because SolidWorks wasn't the first 3D modeling system that I learned. But what I appreciate is how I can actually start the desired feature and it says, wait a minute, there's no sketch. Would you like to create one? And how I can actually create that sketch. And once I'm done with my sketching, it will put me right back into that desired feature. So sometimes it's the little things that you may not appreciate, um, but save you that uh, couple seconds and you know, over a day it actually starts to add up. So I'm gonna start the rectangle, but I know that this isn't the option that I want. Well, instead of having to go way over to the feature manager there, I'm just gonna press the A key and notice that by pressing the A key, it'll actually allow me to toggle through all the various types. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for a center point rectangle so I can snap it to the origin. And what I wanna do here is I wanna start dimensioning this. Now, notice that dimensions are appearing, so both of them, the height and the width here in this case. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter six, I'm gonna hit enter, and notice that only the six so far has been entered. So I'm just gonna kind of pick a spot here, let's say about there, and notice that that width dimension was not added. Now how come, why is it working that way? Well, I'm gonna go to my options, I'm just gonna to go to tool options, and I apologize that it probably got cut off there, but in my system options, I'm gonna to go to the sketch tab, or panel here area, and notice right now that it, I have enabled on-screen numeric input, so that's why the dimensions are appearing, but I've also enabled to only create dimensions when I enter a value. So what that means, again, is that if I start creating a line here and I type in, let's say, three, notice that it does dimension it. But if I just come in here and just pick a spot, notice that there is no dimension. So we'll only enter in dimensions when I actually specify or enter something in there. So that's the reason why I didn't get a dimension on, on the bottom there. Okay, now there are a couple other things that I, I really like about the, the line command. So some time-saving things here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick a spot and I'm going to start dragging my line up. And I want to go about here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click. But notice I'm still in the line command. Well, if I just double-click anywhere, notice how it exits the command. Now another way of doing that is that if I come in here and I click and drag, and I let go, notice that that creates a single line. Now the only disadvantage to that is you can't enter a dimension at the same time, um, but it is a real quick way to, to create that um, line in there. So let's just create a, a horizontal line in there to, to create that. Another thing I like about the line command is how easy it is to switch into arc mode. So I'm gonna start with a line here, and in some cases you might find that you know relationships are, are being automatically applied. So you know maybe here I'm getting a a constraint or not. Sometimes what you need to do is just over exaggerate. So just kind of pull it over past where you actually want it and just use your smart dimensions to to pull it back into into location. So you know instead of having to worry about um, you know it automatically snapping in the wrong place, just over exaggerate. Or you can hold down the control key and the control key will actually override that and not apply any automatic relationships. Okay, so I'm gonna create my first line here. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna do an arc. So I'm just gonna pull my cursor back here. And I like to call it the happy face. I know it's not a happy face, but once I see that little yellow circle, now I know that I'm actually in the arc mode. So I can actually pull out that arc and notice now it's back into the line mode. Now, if I was to pull it back there again, notice it's allowing me to create another arc. If I pull it there again, you know, it's gonna stay in that, that arc mode. So I could switch it, but I'm just going to double click to finish it just to show you that, um, you're still in the line command, so all the line command options still apply. So let's apply that one there, and let's just finish this up by a by applying a tangent constraint. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another line here, and I'm gonna add a line from the center here. I'm gonna snap there, and what I need to do is I need to take this line, and I need to make that vertical to get that into location. Okay, so I'm ready to clean up my geometry, so I'm gonna start the trim entities. And one thing that you might skip past is notice the yellow message here, it says hold down and drag your cursor to trim. So what that means is that I can actually click and drag and notice how it does the trim for me. The other thing about the trim command is that you can actually extend with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag here and notice that by clicking and dragging on that line, I'm able to extend it to the desired location. So using that, I was able to, to extend that to that particular point. Now I'm actually looking to revolve this so the way it is right now is I actually only want half of this. 
So I'm going to use my split entities to split this shape. Now I, I'm a big fan of split because it never removes relationships. Well, I shouldn't say never, but it will maintain the majority of your relationships, whereas trim a lot of times will actually remove them. Now split entities doesn't appear in your panel. What you can do is you can do a command search. So I can come up here and I can say, let's search for split. And then I can actually drag and drop that and add that to my panel. Now what I want to do is I want to split the entities here and I want to take this and I actually want to split that there. So now I've got two arcs um, instead, of, instead of the one arc. And I'm going to use my trim command again. And I'm actually going to extend that to that point. Well, that didn't work. Let's extend that there. Okay, so I've, I've got the, the shape in there. It's looking good. Um, you know, I was able to do the majority of it with trim in the line command, although I did use the split as well. So now I've got my shape defined. Let's exit the sketch, flips me back into kind of an isometric mode, and I'm able to go in there and select my shape, and I'm gonna click the check mark, and we can see that my shape has been created. So I've created the knob for my, my transmission here is what I was looking to do, and I'm quite happy with it. So there you have it, some of my favorite little tips um, for, for sketching. Hopefully they help you out as much as they've helped me out.